welcome. I want everybody in here just to tell him that. Come on, open up your mouth and declare it. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Come on, you can say that in English. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Oh, come on, open your mouth tonight. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. You're welcome here. You're welcome here. You're welcome here. Come on, say it. Draw us to Jesus. Woo! Oh! Draw us to Jesus. <laughs> Draw us to Jesus. Call us out of whatever we're in that stop us from seeing you. How you lift it up. Draw us to Jesus. I want you to put your hands up and just reverence his presence tonight if you know that he's here. If you know that he lives in you and you brought him with you. Come on, I want you to just open your hands up and say, Lord, you're welcome. Tell him right here, out of your own mouth, Holy Spirit, in my life, come on. He'll take the stress out. He'll take the strain out. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your. Come on, get those hands up. Tell them. Let us become more aware of your presence. Come on, you say right there. Let us experience the glory of your. Just say that. Let us become more aware. Come on, make it quiet here. Let us, let us experience. Come on, you know those lyrics. Let us become. More aware of your presence. Let us experience. Oh, oh, oh. let us, let us speak. Up. Say that again. Let us speak. Up. Let us speak. Up. More aware. I can't hear the church on the two. Let us. Let us become more aware by your presence. Let us become more aware. That's been my prayer all day. Come on, you say it. Come on, lift your voice. Let us become more aware. Come on, five more times. Let us become. Ma 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 ma. Hey, come on. Let us become more aware of your presence. Come on, is that in his body's prayer? Let us, let us become. Everywhere. And let us experience sin. And let us experience. Let us become. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your presence. Your presence, Lord. Oh, your presence. Oh, oh, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come on, say that. Come flood this place and fill me out. Your glory, Lord. Hey.
every eye closed and just put your hands out like put your hands out like this stand right there come on Lenai why your hands ain't up put your hands out say these words I receive Holy Spirit say it again I receive your spirit I welcome you said I'm say sensitize me to what you're saying come on say I want to be led who shut that come on say I want to be led father we want to be led I thank you now that by the leading of your spirit we will not miss a moment come on we will not miss a door we will not we will not uh, be at the wrong place at the wrong time but you are divinely leading us and we thank you Spirit of God now listen we're asking you I thank you that there is a, a rebaptism of the Holy Ghost that is among us and I thank you that the scripture says that we're this we're in the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty I thank you father that every teenager that every child, that every man, that every woman, that every boy and every girl. Father, you promise in your word that in the last days that you will pour out your spirit on all flesh. So I thank you tonight through the teaching of your word. We will come to understand that nobody is discounted. But you want to fill us. Somebody say, fill me all over again. You can have your seat tonight. I'm going to get straight into the word. We won't be with you long. It's Halloween. And the saints, y'all party Saturday night anyway. <laughs> the saints are in the house tonight. And I can't wait to eat all my kids' candy when they get, when they get whatever they got. I'm finding it. Let's go to, uh, let's, <laughs> Tess is out here. Go to um, John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Y'all thought we was going to cancel church tonight. Because we had two services Sunday. Gotcha. Gotcha. You went to work, didn't you? Eco Sata. Did, did you work? Did you? Yeah, did you die? You was gonna make sure you got that pay. Anybody out of PTO? Anybody fresh out? Zilch ain't got no paid time off. You didn't use it all. Just me. Okay, I don't have, I'm on borrowed. <laughs> if I leave, it is not just not paying me. I want to um, I want to first of all say thank all of you that made this weekend this past weekend possible. We could not have did it without your participation. And so whatever part you played in anything that happened this past weekend, just pat yourself on the back and say God is with me. Every time somebody give me a compliment, I said because of Calvary, because of Calvary. All right, let's go to the word John chapter fourteen verse sixteen. I want to preach. Let's do third. Give me thirty. Let me see if I can hold myself. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get razor sharp. Give me 30 minutes. Start me now. Pastor Chris, uh, he's just ready to play. He just come play. Um, uh, let's go straight into the word. Did y'all hear what Apostle Carter taught? Was everybody here Sunday evening? Did y'all hear what he taught Sunday evening? Oh, my God. A bomb. Sound like a comeback, don't it? I'm just saying. Um, we have heard, I've heard at least, I think, two testimonies since we've been together Sunday, since Sunday of specifically financial increase, financial unexpected stuff. And so if you have sown anything in this season of your life, if you've put anything in the ground by faith, if you've sown your, look at me, if you've sown your time, if you've sown your energy, and you've done it by faith, if you've done it in faith, you have a harvest. I'm going to say it again in here. I said, you have a harvest. And so I would wake up in the morning expecting God to do what he promised me that he was going to do. I'm expecting a miracle every day. Because I know that God will make a way out of no way. And so the Lord told us Sunday morning that we are in a season called comeback. 
and he said that he would use uncommon means and uncommon ways and uncommon methodologies and he would cause people that don't like you to bless you and people that you don't know to bless you. But there was an old song that I came up singing on the drums that said, any way you bless me, I'll be satisfied. And so if you use my enemy, if you tell me to call my enemy, I'm going to call them because it might be a God opportunity. Y'all don't like that kind of talk. I got 28 minutes, 10, 28 minutes, 9 seconds. Let's go. Uh, what did I tell y'all? That ain't what I told. That's it. John 14. John 14. If you're writing, I want you to take notes. Someone, I think it was Bishop years ago, told me about this. And when we were studying, when he was preaching on the Holy Spirit, I went and looked at it. Some, for me right now, there are some basic concepts that I'm going back over to study for myself because I heard somebody tell me a lot of what we do. Monkey see, monkey do. My pastor said. But I would encourage you tonight, we're going to study. We're going to crack the word open. I'm going to give you some study uh, paraphernalia. So that you can take it home and find out for yourself. We have to have an answer for why we believe. You need to know why you believe what you believe. You need to know if you're fasting, you need to know why you're doing it. Because if you're doing it because someone else is doing it, then you probably won't get uh, the benefit of it. So if you, if you work out, if you eat right, I bought, a, I bought something the other day from Sprout, and it was a buffalo chicken wrap. That's what I'm calling. My, my blood pressure was going up. I had too much fried food the last week, so I said, I need to, need to get straight. So I went to Sprout in the little, 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 little deli queue and got me. I said, this is a buffalo wrap. That looks healthy. And didn't read it. was rushing and got in the car and opened it up and bit into that thing. And it was blue cheese. But I, yeah, <laughs> So you need to know why you're doing what you're doing. You can't just be around here eating healthy because you see Natalia eating healthy. Y'all see the stuff that she posts online. She says, oh, I could do that. Uh-uh, you got to build a stamina. You, I went one time and said, I ain't, I'm going to just eat no meat just forever and just stop eating meat and didn't know that you need to substitute that meat from that protein from the meat. You got to eat some beans and some stuff. <laughs> and so I was around here on the, about the third, fourth day. I said, Bring my head is hurt. She said, you need to go somewhere. So don't just be trying to do it because you see somebody else doing it. You better get an understanding of what you're doing. Otherwise, because you don't know where I started at. You don't know where I You see somebody in the gym bench pressing 225, and you get in there on your first day, and your chest cave in. You got to start. <laughs> you got to start somewhere. Everybody say, I got to crawl. Before I walk, in Jesus' name. All right, let's go to, I got 25 minutes, 29 seconds. First tier, I'm going to give you three manifestations of the Holy Spirit, or three depths, or three levels. I don't really like to say levels because it levels almost it, uh, communicates that someone is left out. You think about levels, you think, well, some, who's, well who's third place? There is, in, in ocean water, there is uh, ankle deep, knee deep, waist deep, and then there's neck level. If you've ever been in a moving body of water before, you know that around the level of where it gets to your waist, it can carry you away. You're no longer in full control. But for those of you who can't swim, you stay on the, you know, put your swimsuit on, just have your little cover up, and then you just be on the side just drinking something nice. But those of you who can swim, you don't mind going out there in the deep where your feet can't touch. Are you listening to me tonight? And so in the spirit, there is a place where uh, you are with him, but you are in control. You are the one that is driving the vehicle. You can't swim, and those people who cannot... Uh, physically, those people who cannot swim, if they've got good sense, they don't like to be around a whole bunch of body of water without no life apparatus on. People that can't swim, if they take a cruise, they sleep with their life jacket on. Just in case something happens. But there is a level of curiosity 
and the lack of I don't want to be in control when you can swim. I know that this water is not going to drown me because I'm used to these waters. There is a place in the spirit that you can get deep enough that you relinquish your control and he is the sole driver. Most of us don't want, that's not interesting to us because the culture says that I got to protect myself. Let's go to the word. 23 minutes, 18 seconds. John 14, 16. This is the first level. We're going to call this um, with you. John 14. You got John 14? We're going to go to verse 16. This is Jesus talking to his disciples. I'm going to read Amplified Version. Verse 15, and if you really love me, you will keep and obey my commandments. It's in your Bible too. Verse 16, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper. That's the Holy Spirit. Say the Holy Spirit. The Amplified in, in, in parentheses or in, um, what's them things called? Them, them things, them half moons. Comforter. Everybody say comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, stand by. Those are all attributes of the Holy Spirit. He says, I'm going to give you that helper to, to be all of those things, to provide all of those things, to be with you forever. Somebody say, with me. And the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive and take heart because it does not see him nor does know him. Some of us, the reason why the spirit of God receiving him and asking him to come in to lead us and to guide us and to be our comforter is a foreign concept to us is because we can't see him. Some of us don't want to even work the job that we work because we can't see that hourly money coming in your account. You got to wait two weeks. <laughs> so you say, I'll quit this job because you can't see the dollar signs. But if, you, if there was a clock that would calculate how much money you were making by minute, by hour, you would say, okay, I can quit when the rent, <laughs> the rent is paid. I'll quit. So because we cannot see him, Sometimes it makes the concept of the Holy Spirit difficult because we can't see. Can't put his, put our. But y'all don't like to uh, shop online because you can't understand buying something and releasing money out of your account. Glory to God. Because you can't wait. Y'all didn't hit what I said. Okay. But, second part of verse 17, but you know him because the Holy Spirit remains, everybody say, with me. Number one, this is the first tier, with you. Throw me that bottle right there. That bottle, uh-huh. This bottle of water is with me. It's not in me. I'm not full of it. It's with me. He is, another scripture talks about that he is the paraclete, or he's to walk alongside us. So he's telling his disciples in John 14, second part of verse uh, 17, say he's with them. That's the first tier. When you got saved, it was the spirit of God that drew you to him. The, you heard a song and you, you wasn't right and you was tired of living how you was living. And you, oh, 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 oh. That was the spirit of God. Does anybody ever remember the first time? I want you to raise your hand in here and see if you can remember. The first time the Holy Ghost and you answered. Do you remember? I was at a meeting mm -hmm, one night mm -hmm, and my heart wasn't right. And something. Anybody remember when the Spirit of God came? You remember that? I cried. The second time I remember the Spirit of God coming to me, I cried so much I got dehydrated. I cried and cried and cried and cried, and I didn't know what to do. Scotty came to the altar a couple Sundays ago, and we asked him, 
how he felt after that encounter that he had. And he said, I felt like there were no bones in my body. I collapsed and I felt like I was just putty under the power of the Holy Spirit. He said that days after that initial encounter, he said, Pastor John, I can't listen to worship music when they start talking about the love of God at work. He said, because I start crying uncontrollably on the work floor. That is foreign to us because we're calloused. Worship music, and we talk about and sing about the love of Jesus as if it's a Slim Jim. There's no, no what? There's no tent. That, it, it doesn't register. Who in here loves Jesus? Who in here is in love with him? Who in here knows that, that if it had not been for the Lord, that, that, that we need him more than we need our very next breath. That is in him that we live and that we move and that we have our being. We are dependent on his leading and his guiding. So first tier is with us. Let me finish this. Verse 19. After a little while, go to verse 18. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come back to you. After a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. He's talking to his disciples. But because I live, you will also live. I'm trying to get to verse 21. Verse 20, on that day when the time comes, he's talking about the second tier. Everybody say second tier. He says, on that day, you will know for yourselves that I am the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Somebody say, on that day. So what he's telling them is that right now, that's not that day. I'll just be with you. In the Old Testament, before Jesus, the Spirit of God wouldn't fill a man or a woman. He would rest on them. He would be with them. And so you see in the Old Testament, they would fleece God. God, if you want me to do this, then let, let this towel be wet. Let this towel be dry because the Spirit of God had not come within yet. Somebody say, with us. Uh, verse 21, the person who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. And wherever really, whoever really loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and I will reveal myself to him. That's the first tier. Right? Go with me to John 20. Go over a couple of chapters to John 20. Write this down if you're taking notes tonight. The more aware you are of the Holy Spirit, the more evident he will become in your life. The more awareness. That's why we say let us become more aware. The, 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 a problem with a believer Everybody know who Catherine Kuhlman is? Does everyone know who Catherine Kuhlman is? Teenagers, study who Catherine Kuhlman is. I'll give you $20. The first person who can give me a hundred, let's say two hundred, no, because y'all going, y'all going, Gabe is already, he already looking up. The first person that can give me a, a verbal breakdown of who Catherine Kuhlman is and what her significance is to the body of Christ, I'll give you $25. You match me? All right, that's 50. No, you can't win it. So anyway, Catherine Kuhlman, Benny Hinn, listen, I'm almost done. Uh, Benny Hinn was saying the other day that when Catherine Kuhlman would get done preaching in her services, she was, she was um, one of the most profound ministers of the gospel and, and, and moved very heavily in miracles, very tangible miracles. And so in her meetings, he said that when she would get done ministering, one of the things that she would say after all that God did through her, she would say, if only I cooperated with him a little more. If only I would have cooperated with the Spirit of God, oh, what, what would have happened in that meeting? If only I would have cooperated with Holy Spirit. What she was saying is that there were things that he wanted me to do, but, but I missed him. I was distracted. I couldn't. I wasn't sensitive enough. 
the conflict with us in the spirit of God is that he requires, he wants sensitivity. So the more that we acknowledge him, the more he'll come. Acknowledge him in all of your ways and he will direct your path. I'm almost done. I was driving the other day. In the morning, you know how you have your daily agenda on your brain. I got to do this. I got to take these kids to school. I got to do breakfast. I'm late. Uh, I got to drop the, all the stuff that's on your agenda for the day. You know that, right? Okay. It was raining profuse. This is a couple of days ago. And I'm driving in the car. I'm trying to get my update on MSNBC, trying to figure out what's happening in Palestine. I'm, I'm tracking it. And out of the blue, the Holy Spirit, he said to me, cut that off and sing this song. I can't remember what the lyrics of the song was or what the song was, but it was about, I can't remember who it was by, but it was about his protection and his blood. I probably sang the chorus three or four times driving by myself in the rain on a two-lane road going to take the kids home from school and a car in front of me, the wheels were turned to the right, but it was still going straight. And I'm singing this song not registering What's happening, this car slides off the road, goes into a ditch, goes up into the air, and then lands on the hood of another car that's at the light. I said, the blood of Jesus. He said, I, I, I went before you, and because you, you were led by me, I covered you. Sensitivity. So please don't make this mistake of thinking that I have to be in prayer all day. All day. No, you don't. You spend your devotional time with the Holy Spirit. And then when that prayer stops, listen, fellowship doesn't stop. All day long, I've been with Jesus. All day long, my lips have uttered praise. All day long, my heart, my mind has been lifted in worship. All day long, I have been with him. So when you say amen at the end of your prayer, you should still be in fellowship. So even though you're done praying, you're not done fellowship with the Spirit of God, and neither is he done fellowshipping with you. So when we are, second tip, when, when we are in the Spirit or walking in the Spirit, the miraculous should be common among us. Every day of the week, you should know something that you did not know or could not know. There is a secret that should be revealed to every one of us every day of the week if we walk in the Spirit. Got to give you another example, then I got to stop. I'm going to give you two more. My cousin, my aunt, my aunt was in Lawrence, and she said she was at the grocery store, and my, I have a cousin that has a medical complication. I don't know what it is, but he had real bad seizures. And she said that she was at the grocery store getting something for a dinner. And she said the Holy Spirit told her to buy like five bundles of bananas. Buy bananas. She, I'm not making, she said, I'm not making, I wasn't making banana pudding. I wasn't making anything that required banana. And she said the Spirit of the Lord arrested her and said, buy bananas. She bought bananas and she said that she went to the house and my cousin had an episode. He had an episode, and she said, the Spirit of the Lord said, give him bananas. Give him bananas. I think she said the hot, the, uh, they called the ambulance. Ambulance picked him up. When they found out what was going on with him, what the cause was, and what, what the reaction was due to, they said that if, if, he had, if he had not have gotten immediate potassium in his system, he would have died. I didn't hear what I'm saying. There were no bananas in the house. They're not banana eaters. She, she, she said initially in her mind, why am I buying these bananas? No one eats bananas like that in our house. She said, but the Holy Ghost, because he knows past, present, and future, he knew that something was going to happen and that somebody who was led of the Spirit would have the answer. 
So my cousin is alive because somebody was led of the spirit at, 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 at the grocery store. The name of the grocery store was Checkers. Somebody was led of the spirit at Checkers and somebody is alive because they weren't so focused on what's going on in their life. That's called fellowship. What a fellowship. Now we turned it into a devotional song, but there was something that was being decoded in them Baptist lyrics. We shouted off of it, but we missed that if you can live in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, there is nothing that will sneak up on you. I can't believe it, probably because you wasn't in the spirit. Oh, my God! I want to see if he was well, awake. Oh, my God! Ah! Falling apart. You know who, who, you know who falls apart? People that don't have the temperance of the Holy Spirit. Has anybody in here been through a situation that you should have fell apart, but the Holy Ghost fell? Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Anybody ever been through a season where you said, I'm losing my mind with the Holy Ghost? Hell, Judah. Has it doing Anybody know what I'm talking about? Y'all going to make me lose my mind. But if somebody in the penitentiary would have said, receive, Brother DMX, he could have kept his mind while he was in doing the bid. Standing on business. I just had to say it. Okay, second tier, John 20 and 19. We're going to read three verses. <laughs> Standing on business. <laughs> okay, verse 20. Uh, I can't find 20. Okay, there we go. Verse 20. John 20 and verse 19. So when it was evening on the same day, the first day of the week, though the disciples were meeting behind barred doors for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be unto you. After he said this, this is after the crucifixion, he showed them his hands and his side. There are some of you that God has allowed you to experience what you have experienced because your story is, is, is how people are going to come to believe in Jesus. There is a nation of people that you are called to that if they don't hear your battle wounds and see your scars, they won't know that Jesus is a deliverer. And so he needs somebody to go through fire with the Holy Spirit or filled with him and make it out so that you can come and show your family and say, see, listen, I am a witness that he can turn your, you see, real evangelism is really not knocking on doors with tracks, come to my church, I want you to hear my pastor. That's not really effective evangelism. I don't, I don't, because I, I don't want you knocking on my door at an unexpected time because I might be spending time with my wife. I said what I said. And so I don't want you knocking at my door unannounced anyway. No solicitation. Pull the I don't want you interrupting me in my rest time. But real evangelism is when your family knew what you were bound with and you show up and you don't do the thing. You're not controlled by the thing that used to control you. And they look at you and say, what happened to you? That's your story. That's evangelism. When you no longer look like who you used to look like around the people who you used to look like it with. That is evangelism. Now, I know that you used to be the drunkest of the drunkest of the drunkest in the party. While you ain't sipping and leaning like you used to, let me tell you what happened. I don't have no help here. You used to be strung out. You, you, but what happened to you? I know somebody who can fill you with something else that won't leave you empty. I was doing what I was doing because I was trying to fill an emptiness, but I found a drink that it would never leave me thirsty again. Give me your hand. I want to introduce you to the Holy Spirit. Just receive. So they don't have to come to your church. You can, you can 
get somebody filled with the Spirit of God wherever you are. But I say, I got to receive. Okay, I got to cut across the way. You ready? What did I tell you? John 20 and 19. Did we read it yet? Peace be under you. Verse 20. He said, show me his hands and his side. All of that. Verse 21. Then Jesus said to them again, peace be under you as my father has sent me. So I will send you. Uh, we almost done. Verse 22. And when he said this, go back to verse 21. Then Jesus said to them again, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you as my representatives. The reason why the Spirit of God is getting ready to do what he's getting ready to do with them because they have to be first partakers of what they're getting ready to distribute. So you can't get someone filled with the Spirit of God if you're not filled yourself. He says, verse 22, and when he said this, he breathed, breathed on them, and he said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. He breathed on them, and they received. Everybody say second tier. He was with them. Now he's in them. He says to them, and if you, he says, if you forgive sins of anyone, they are forgiven. And if you retain the sins of anyone, they are retained. I don't like that. Then it goes on to talk about Thomas. That's tier two. Y'all got that? If you read in John 14, he'll also talk about that first tier. We read that, right? Go to the third. Last point, and I'm done. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. What's the first, what's the first stage? With me. He'll be with me. I used to be afraid to go outside to get my aunties and then purse out the alley. Because that's what they cause. I see, I need you to go. Somebody to go with me. But then there's another level when the spirit of God moves from the outside and you invite him in. Now, most of all of us that are saved, he is within. If you got saved, you received him within. The dilemma with that is, we're not overflowing. This cup, this, this, this water, it has, this cup, it has water in it, but it ain't full. It's not overflowing. I need some more water. She already looked at this. Come on, she, you can't beat my wife. My wife she woke up in the flow. So, Acts 2 and 1. You ready? It says, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. I think your version says fully. King James, does it say fully? Everybody read and amplify. Does somebody's version say fully? Fully. So, the first tier is he's with you. Second tier, he's in you. But the, the third level is when you become so full of him that you are overflowing. That Listen, listen, look at me, look at me. Your life, it is no longer privately just you in this cocoon. Do y'all understand that Peter's shadow was healing people? Okay. Okay, y'all don't. Y Do y'all understand that the, the, the tangible, it's, it's not, we don't have to wait for a healing revival to move in healing. When you are overflowing with the Spirit of God, it, it, it is common. Somebody say it's common. So if, 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 if you were overflowing, give me five minutes, I'm done. If, if we were overflowing, well, we have him. He's in there. We got to, that's why it takes us so long to pray to get into this. Because we're trying to. Yield and get all that flesh and all that craziness out the way. There should be no part in your day that the Spirit of God has to interrupt. <laughs> he shouldn't have to use car accidents and calamity to get our We should be constantly in fellowship with him. 
There is a place of sensitivity with the spirit where he just whispers. He just whispers. Tiffany, go this way to work this morning. You're going to meet somebody. Do this. God will, the spirit of God will give you an idea that will make you a thousandaire. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if we under, there are people that are sick that he wants to heal and he wants to use you as a conduit for that healing, but you have to be sensitive. So what does fasting do? One of the things that fasting does is it causes us to be sensitive. It doesn't make you more holy. It, it increases, listen to me, your sensitivity. Has anybody ever fasted before and you could hear Holy Spirit look clearer? I don't, we don't believe in fasting. Okay, let me read something. The Pentecost was fully come. They were all in one place, together in one place, and suddenly a sound came from heaven like a mighty rushing violent wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Verse 3, there appeared to them tongues resembling fire, which being distributed among them, and they rested on each one of them as each person received the baptism. That's what this is the full measurement of the Holy Spirit, and they were all, everybody say, filled. He, was, he didn't just come. He didn't just come in. They were filled. This is the first thing that happened when they were filled. You listening? They were filled. Uh, 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 uh. What verse I stop at? They were all filled. That is diffused throughout their being meaning that there was no area in their life that he wasn't in. <laughs> How many of us have areas? I know y'all don't like this. How many of us have areas where we say, ah, don't, don't go in there. <laughs> I go to check John's room, and I, and I say, is the room clean? Yeah. Is under the bed clean? Yeah. Is the bed clean? Yeah. Is, is the bathroom clean? Yeah. Is the playroom clean? Yeah. What about your closet? Uh, he said, let me go back up. <laughs> Why? Because I didn't know you was going to check the closet. But here, when the Holy Spirit filled them, it says, diffused throughout their whole being with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other tongues, in different languages, as the Spirit was giving them the ability to clearly speak out and appropriately. They became the first Google Translate. So this... Wow. That ain't full yet. It's almost there. It ain't there yet, is it? So what, what this looks like, come on, oh, give me a bit. Better. So, so what it looks like is, is the spirit of, listen, I'm done. The spirit of God will say, what you're doing grieves me. <laughs> what you said was ugly. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Why are you behaving that way? That's ugly. You ever posted something and then took it down? <laughs> you ever sent a text? I shouldn't say. Let me unsend that. <laughs> you ever want to say something? Holy Spirit put his hand over your mouth? I will. <laughs> because what he's saying is, that grieves me. And I will only be where I am welcome. I will only reside where I'm allowed. And if you tell me no, I won't fight you. I'll go. Benny Hinn said that in his room when he got filled at Landon's age and, and Ian's age, he said that his family would call him to come downstairs to eat dinner. And he was in conversation and in fellowship with the spirit that he would tell his parents 10 more minutes because I'm I'm I, this overwhelming joy that I feel I don't want to leave his presence to go and eat something is happening in my heart and in my mind and I want to stay right here with him it's been a long time since most of us have been there where the Spirit of God says, 
just, just, just stay with me. You're free. Give me, give me 15 minutes of undivided worship. It ain't full yet, but it's in there. God wants you to be overflow where you are running over, where you are, where we are running over. That is when we become good for somebody else. That is when your life, it no longer becomes just about you and I. Anybody want to live there? Anybody want to live there? Where every day is an experience with the Holy Ghost. Every day someone is, is receiving him because of your deadness to yourself. I'm done. That takes discipline, though. That takes a sensitivity. That takes a great deal of self-denial. You ever wanted to eat a big old fat hamburger in the Holy Ghost say, don't, don't, just, just tell yourself no today. Anybody ever, <laughs> Chris, not me, has, put your hands, I, I want somebody to see your, have, have you, have you prepared yourself to go somewhere or do something or, or anything, buy something and you felt the spirit of God said, your your usual routine every day I every day I and every and it's and he said this those are opportunities to exercise discipline so that you are more aware of him. Say amen. Any questions? Any questions? Does this make sense? What's the first tier? With us. What's the second level in us? What's the third level? Overflowing or filled or, or bubbling forth. So this doesn't, this doesn't have to be limited to church settings. But everywhere you go, he is with you. I didn't been in some crazy places. I didn't been in some non church And the Holy Ghost says, say this. <laughs> Tell this person this. Right here, they need to hear this. I've prayed for people in bathrooms, uh, in, in bathrooms in public places before depression beyond them. You ever seen somebody and just knew that they were at their end? If you have it, it is not because you haven't seen it, it's because you weren't sensitive. But when you become sensitive, you start feeling those that are around you, and not only feeling it, but God will give you the answer. The Lord says he wants you to know that it's going to be all right. And what you are contemplating, don't make that decision. You'll regret it. Don't do that. Go this way. Anybody ever been used like that in an uncommon? He wants to use us in a greater measure. But it requires, Brittany was asking, I'm done. She was asking me, she was stabbing questions at me. And, and I said, you frustrated me. She said, well, I just want to know. She said, how does it happen? How does a person get filled like that? And I had to, I had to, it's okay. I had to buffer. She was really asking, like, tell me questions. And I said, it is discipline. You want, you want another nugget? And we stop it. We're going we're gonna to pray real quick. We're going to give and go home unless somebody need prayer. God will use, let's say if you're disciplined in working out. Let's say if you have built up a discipline, I go no matter what. I just do it. Feel like it? Don't. I'm just going to do it. And that individual is unsaved. If that person has exercised the muscle of discipline, when they come over into God, something, they will, it will be easier for them to yield to the spirit because they already have a discipline already prepared. So those of you who show up and just, it doesn't matter if it's raining, sleeting, or snowing, I'm coming to the house of the Lord, that's a discipline. Those of you who were raised by your father and you understand chastisement, when you came over into God, you didn't have to stay a long time in the rejection classroom because you understand God the Father. It was a discipline that was already there. So when you come over into Holy Spirit, that's not an area that has to be worked with.
So you, you have more room for him because there's already been a discipline in an area, even though it might not have been in that particular area. Disciplines can convert. Okay, I'm done. Any questions? Does this make sense? What's the first level? Y'all got to get it. What's the first level? He's with me. He was with them before the Holy Spirit was released for everybody. Before Jesus died on the cross, he was with us. He would come up on a man. If you read in the Old Testament, all of the greats, you will read, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon Samson, came upon Elisha, came upon whoever, came upon David because he wasn't within yet. Second level is He's in us. Third level is overflowing. Overflow. Stand and let's pray. Stand and let's pray. Stand and let's pray. Tonight, this is this is this is my prayer for all of us. You listening? I want you tomorrow to on purpose practice Holy Spirit awareness. You hear what I said? Practice in every conversation. Always remember Jesus. Always remember. Know that song? Keep him on your mind. The more you exercise that discipline that he is here with me, the more benefit he comes to you. I'm going to give y'all a carnal example, but y'all a smile. The Holy Spirit knows a lottery numbers. <laughs> the Holy Spirit knows what, what land has oil on it. The Holy Spirit knows where your need is. The Holy Spirit knows what, what job, what career field for you to apply for so that you can be the millionaire he told you that you were supposed to be in your 20s. It's all through sensitivity. All things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. You can do it all, but it don't mean it's going to benefit you. That's what that means. You can do whatever you want to do because you're grown. But is it getting you to where he wants you? Close your eyes and just put your hands up. Father, I thank you that those that are in this room, you asked us to practice another level of awareness of your spirit. I thank you that in the parking lot, that in our bedroom, that, that in the shower, that in the restroom, that in the lunchroom, Everywhere we go, your spirit wants to be there with us. Father, I thank you that, that you would overflow in us. We are, the, your, your word says that he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness, they shall be. I thank you, Father, that we will no longer just live our lives for our family and our career and our future. But you want to use our life to affect the masses in an uncommon way. I thank you. Put those hands up real high. Train us, Holy Spirit. I give you praise that these hands, these hands will heal the sick. These hands will cast out devils. Woo, how you, come on, open your mouth. I declare, Father, that we will always be at the right place. Come on, at the right time. That we would not lose our mind because of stress. That we would not lose our faith because of fear. But I thank you tonight as we leave this place without your presence. Your spirit is holding us together. Say, hold me together. Come on, say, hold my mind together. Those of you that have been stressed. Those of you that have been overwhelmed. Just put your hands on your mind and say, hold it. Come on, the spirit of God will hold your mind together. I declare your mind will not stop. I declare and decree that you will not lose it. I decree and declare that stress will not take you out. I declare that your blood pressure 
right now is being regulated in every financial hardship. This, this couple back here, this couple back here, the Lord says that when you get home, the two of you, when you get home, he says, stand in the middle of your floor. Stand in the middle of your floor. He says two things. He says the first thing, to tell depression that it is no longer welcome in your residence. And the Lord says the second thing that he wants you to do is thank him for a new page. The Lord says that he is ready to turn a new page in y'all's life. And he says, oh, oh, you all have been in a very tight squeeze. But he says, after tonight, he's turning the page. You're going to breathe again. Spirit of God, I thank you. I want you to confirm this word with a sign to them. Come on, I thank you that they, when they lay down, they're going to rest. And thank you that stress, I give you praise that stress can't live in that home. Put one hand up. We declare that every chain is broken in Jesus' name. Come on, say, we declare it. Every chain is broken in Jesus' name. Slap your neighbor, neighbor a high five and say, remember the Holy Spirit. Come on, remember him. You can be seated. I have a, I have this is, a, this is a small example, but it might help you, and then we're leaving. I have ministered to um, my supervisors before. Give them the word of the Lord. In the office, supposed to be working. One of my bosses was in there crying. Papers all over her desk was wet. But I needed to get off to go preach, and I didn't have no time left. <laughs> a couple of weeks later, I just... <laughs> So I was, listen, I'm, I'm done. I was working, and she said, get off the clock and come in my office. I need to talk to you. And she asked me to minister to her. So a week later, I had an engagement come up. I didn't have no time. So I said, I, I, said, I don't know how I'm going to get this. She said, no, I'm going to make it happen for you. You got to go. Because what you carry, whoever, if, 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 if the spirit of God in you did it, through you for me at work. I know that whatever you about to go and do, it's going to be that. She said, just, just take all the time you need. Don't, don't worry about it. That's a small example. Somebody say small example. But you should have, you should have experiences every day of the week. I hope y'all are hearing this. You, if you spirit feel, you should have, something should be happening daily. Somebody say Yes. The life of the believer should not be boring. It should not be boring. They're just jumping over here. And, and <laughs> okay. I want everybody to come get a seat.
will do it. Come bring your offering, whatever you're sowing, whatever you're sowing tonight, and then you be careful on your way. Oh, you want to jump? Did you did you want to jump? I'm sorry. I love you. Amar, you want to jump? <laughs> 